God. I can totally know this God mm-hmm. enough to say them that I know that I know that He exists for well, certainty. There, there's a, a problem with that. There's there are a lot of people out there who have a, what they call an innate knowledge of God because they experience the movement of of uh, the Spirit during church sessions and things like sure. that. They feel sure. like they have internalized God. God is something that they do know about. But the problem is that uh, th- there's several things, several problems with it. One, it could be a um, hallucination, auditory hallucination, a real hallucination. It could be brought on by drugs. There are several different ways why um, why internal knowledge should be questioned. Uh, secondly, sure. even if, could... even Sorry, if they ahead. do have a real uh, emotional change in a church or something, well, what is the yet? What do they attribute it to? I mean, it right. could be the music, the the dancing, the chanting, the style. Uh, how many times do I have, do you have a, a very emotional epiphany at the end of a movie? Uh, it's right. in, and the preachers sure. have gotten better and better at uh, engineering this type of mystical uh, manipulation that goes on well, in the church. Well, I'll say that's certainly true, and that's kind of why the example that I used last time was mm-hmm. was about a knowledge of something like a pain in your arm. And to use your rubric, mm-hmm. you know that pain in your arm. Could actually be something wrong. Could actually be damage mm-hmm. to the your the muscle, um, or it could be a virus in your system, mm-hmm. or it actually just could be psychosomatic, right? You could actually have some other problem. But does that necessarily, in, in from my perspective, does that necessarily discount that uh, discount the very existence of your claim to knowledge about the pain just because the source of it may differ from the explanation that you would assume to be the right, explanation. Right, but so, let's, let's talk about the ancient mystics who would go into the desert and fast for 20 days. <laughs> you know, their right. their experience is very real to them, but is it real in the real world, or is it just something that, that uh, occurred in their brain? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, I'm, of course, not arguing this from a position where I think that uh, people's internal claims to having having a spiritual experience should be respected as true i mean i mean i think i think everything should be to the cast of skepticism i think the one thing that we should be careful with is that uh people can define their god to be as large or as small uh as they want to be and i I always have the thing of saying if someone wants to say my god is this coffee cup and he doesn't have any other special powers except for holding my pee in the morning Mm -hmm. um then i'm willing to say i believe your god Mm -hmm. exists Mm -hmm. you know so (laughs) i i uh, i i'm always cautious to, to to uh to try to um, uh, to try to refute another person's claim to knowledge, mm-hmm. especially about things that happen internally. Right. Now, if the person starts to define their God as you know the the being that created the universe mm-hmm. and has always existed and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. then we can talk about how, you know logic logical contradictions, and we can talk about fallacies, and we can also talk about the improbability of such things from ha- for of you being able to know such that such right. things are happening right. when everyone else doesn't mm-hmm. but i just try to pat down when it, whenever someone tries to make a blanket claim about agnosticism across the whole spectrum of human belief mm-hmm. not well, lending credence to credence to its uh, ontological yeah. claims well there are many as, other things that come into it too i mean you could you could believe in a god you could believe in the bible or all this other good stuff you could even believe that he created the universe or whatever <laughs> But it would bring Christianity to its knees if there was no such thing as a soul. Right. I mean, there, there's all kinds of different levels in here that you have to accept to, to say that Christianity is true. There's like 20 different it, it's steps. A, it's a big package. In yeah, other it's words. a huge package. All right. right. Anyway, that's right. just well, Christianity. I, uh, there's all, I agree all the religions. With you entirely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, hey, Casey, we got about 10 minutes left on the show, and uh, it was great that you called back. We'd like to uh, make a little window for some other people to call in. Awesome. And uh, we'll try and catch your show as well. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Forrest uh, and Larry. Have a good show, guys. Okay, thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, well callers, um, we want to talk to you about uh, Harry Potter, um, maybe how Harry Potter has affected you. Or Thanksgiving. And, and Thanksgiving. Uh, that's uh, both timely topics. Um, I sent a survey question out to the members of the Rationalists of East Tennessee and I think the Atheist Society in Knoxville asking people about uh, Harry Potter, and I got some interesting feedback from them. Uh, Richard had sent us uh, a little observation. He says, there are a lot of parallels to the Bible with Harry Potter. Uh, the la- in the last book, he even dies and is resurrected. Hope we're not giving that nice all away to alert. too many. Yeah. Oh, man, <laughs> boy. I'm sure that's not coming up in this next movie. Uh-huh. Um, uh, let's see. Warren sent in something. Um, 
uh, it talks in about the, the sociological uh, uh, aspect of it. Uh, he says, we could examine how many religious zealots have banned their children from reading the Harry Potter series and watching the movies. Perhaps this could be used to point towards religion's censorship of knowledge in general. As a, as a physicist and a scientist, I really resent when uh, religious people challenge, you know, easily uh, factual observations of science. Um, perhaps we could argue that the study of literature is an art which should be taught to help us discover morality instead of having it imposed on us from ancient superstition. Uh, we can draw a, a parallel between the fantasy of Harry Potter books and the fantasy of the Bible. For example, in, I can't, I may need, I may mangle the pronunciation, Micah. I think it's Micah. Micah right. 5. The Lord says, I will destroy your witchcraft and you will no longer cast spells. I will destroy your, your sacred stones. They also say, su suffer not a witch to live which is one of the founding um, statements of the Bible that supported all the witch trials and witch hunts. Uh, yeah, uh, back during the struggle for uh, dominance of, of Catholicism and Protestantism in Europe, there were an awful lot of especially uh, you know, older women who got burned because people would accuse them of being a witch. And, and it was but almost even, like there even was... Even younger women, too, they, you know, children. Uh, true, it was even done with children, and in fact, even I think pigs and things like that as well. But you know, it was one of these accusations for which there was almost lo like no defense. You were guilty, and you somehow were supposed to prove yourself innocent by, by what you drowned if they dunked you underwater. Mm -hmm. And well, goodness, yeah. there's a bad catch. -22. And it, it got to be a business too in uh, the Catholic Church in Europe. If you turned your neighbor in for witchcraft or even heresy, uh, you would get a reward, and the church would get your property. I mean, get their property, <laughs> the witch's property. So, uh, I mean, it, it was the domino effect, you know, that, that the word went out that they could get money from the church, they could get, uh, the church would get their property. If you had an enemy, all you had to do was accuse them. Yeah. And that was it. And, uh, you know, there was, you know, no modern concept of, of proof. And in fact, um, uh, goodness, in the, um, in the Salem witch trials, um, uh, that happened here in the United States, you know, it, it was just uh, you know kind of a, a travesty how how it was almost like physical evidence was discounted against spiritual evidence. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. So if there's uh, any callers out there who want to tell us about the the things they're looking forward to seeing in the movie here, or perhaps some of their favorite uh, uh, parts from the past movies. Uh, we, we've got, uh, oh, about five minutes or so where you could call in. Mm -hmm. uh, Harry Potter constantly rails against the unfair social classes, or system of social classes, insisting that people be valued for their actions, not their wealth, uh, which is along the same line of Jesus Christ. They're valued for their person, not their wealth. He suffers from deep self-doubt, low self-esteem, resulting from abusive upbringing, and from fear of the powerful forces around him, again. Nevertheless, we, he finds the strength to be a leader and to challenge even the greatest evils in the world that the world has ever known. Um, there are many parallels to, to many of the stories in the Bible. It, there's a lot of good moral teachings in, in here, and I'd say more than the Bible. Uh, there's a lot of bad moral teachings in the Bible. Well, that's right. You know, in, in, in the Bible, you know, if the Bible be true, the father of, of all humanity once had to drown all but seven of his children. Mm -hmm. you know, where, what kind of a father does that say yeah. he was? The, uh, the main teaching of the first of the Old Testament is obey. Might yes. makes right. Uh, if you're a king, you have absolute power over your, your people. There's very few stories in the Old Testament where uh, someone would be able to v value the average peasant over the value of a king or a, a, a w wise person. That's where uh, Jesus in the New Testament says uh, his basic message is believe, um, not necessarily obey like the Old Testament, and that's what, of course, got well, him in trouble. <laughs> for, for he that believes in me shall, mm -hmm. shall go to the afterlife, and there is no way to the afterlife but, so, but, but through the Son. So it's obey and believe. And, and of course, he No died questioning, for, mm -hmm. no investigating. Right. No um, worth, uh, human worth, until you get to the later parts of the Bible. Well, you know, within the Bible, there, there's just no place where they, they place any value on knowledge. 
It's mm-hmm. it's always just well, believe this. Well, the only value this. in knowledge was in uh, the Garden of Eden, which was on the apple, and you should not eat it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just for the gods. Don't don't get that knowledge stuff away from you. All right. Well, um, Hermione can. Yeah, can, let's talk about Hermione here a moment. Yeah. I she's uh, she's a hero. She's against slaves. She's uh, uh, continually objects against the enslavement of house elves. She succeeds through hard work and intelligence. Uh, um, getting back to the Bible, there's nothing in the Bible against slavery. Um, they tell you how to buy your slave, how to sell your slave, you can sell your daughter into slavery, how to mark your slaves, how much you can uh, beat them. You can beat them for, so that if as they, don't, as they die, don't die within three days of the beating, you're okay. Yeah. And if they do die, then you get punished. You don't go to, you know, you don't get to send to jail or anything, you don't get killed, you just get punished. Yeah. So, uh, matter of fact, in the Civil War days, before before the actual war, the Bible was used extensively in the South to prop up the system of slavery because of its references to it. All righty. Well, um, uh, we do want to talk a little bit about Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I spent a little time uh, reading online about the history of Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, when we were in school, we learned about how the pilgrims came to the United States. Well, they came to the colonies to establish themselves. They they signed this Mayflower flower pact. Uh, well, at least some of them did. It wasn't a majority. Uh, the women weren't allowed to sign at all. Uh, that w- Christians will will allege creates the first uh, uh, foundation of a Christian uh, nation here or a government. And uh, allege <laughs> alleged <laughs> yes. Um, and then after they've been here about three years, uh, they have this, I think it was 1623, they have, um, you know, this, this meal of Thanksgiving. Um, and and we, you know, you can find paintings where they show how, you know, with the Native Americans, they were all, you know, n- nicely sharing their mm-hmm. food. But we don't talk about the fact that they had moved into the Native Americans' basically <clears throat> best farmland, which was the flat bottom areas on the mouths of the river. You know they were they were displacing them from their breadbasket, um, and I think it's uh, goodness the the name of the Indian tribe escapes me, but but the, the the Indian tribe that shared that first Thanksgiving meal with them is extinct now. Oh really? Yeah, that I hadn't heard. that that's that's what Christianity brought uh, mm-hmm. uh, to there into Virginia, I believe it is. Mm-hmm. But why do we want to celebrate Thanksgiving? Well, it's actually a harvest festival. Everyone, you know, is glad for a good harvest. Like we say, in agrarian corp, uh, co- societies, it's the best of times. Yep. Uh, you weather a hard winter, you plant in the, win- in the spring, you, you, you all work summer long you're field, working. all summer long in the hot sun, but in the fall it all comes to fruition. You get the, the fruits of your labor, you get to sit down and, and celebrate it with your friends, family, and community. And of course, you know, uh, without refrigeration and modern preservation techniques, some of those things, you just had to eat them when they were ready. <laughs> and so when fall comes, it's a time of plenty. Mm-hmm. And, and therefore, something that will become, you know, legendary for, for good times. And you can be very thankful without having a deity to be thankful to. Just uh, general thankfulness um, is, is all that's required for Thanksgiving. And that we celebrate that as well. And we appreciate the hard work of all of the farmers and the industries that brings this to us. Yeah. Well, let's uh, close up here. Okay. Start, it's time to start wrapping things up. If you'd like to send us feedbacks, please send it to freethoughtforum at yahoo.com. That's freethoughtforum at yahoo.com. And we'll see if we can uh, answer those emails. And afterwards, uh, you can call the station and buy uh, DVDs of this and past episodes. Uh, I think we'll get the number up there uh, for you to call in. And uh, we want to tell you that this has been Free Thought Forum. And I'm Faithless Forrest. I'm Larry Rhodes. And we want to thank Jonas and Sam for being our technical support and all the people at CTV Knoxville. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.